Okay. So, uh, first of all, before I get started, I just want to, uh, I, I think they're around here somewhere, but I just want to thank uh, Scott Gell, Todd Parker, and all the members of the jQuery mobile team uh, because they have an awesome product and uh, they're pretty much the reason why I'm here. So, uh, I'd like to give them a round of applause. <laughs> all right. So, Basically, what we're going to be covering during this session are uh, three main things and one sort of like extra little tidbit. Custom icons, custom themes, and custom plugins, and then a little bit of efficiency and workflow. So it's a lot. This is technically 50 minutes worth of material. So we might have a little bit left over at the, uh, a, a little bit extra time. And if we do, it's fine. I have all the uh, material available. And so anything that I'm not able to cover, you can download it. And so just in case, since we're going to be doing quite a lot, we have a safe word. So in case it gets to be a little bit too much. All right. So while we're going, anyone that wants to download my files, um, you can get them here. I probably wouldn't recommend it on our Wi-Fi. But I have tweeted it. I wrote a blog post earlier with this link. And uh, you can grab it. Don't forget to tweet. It's uh, pound jqcon. Uh, and yeah, there's only one thing that we're is going to be off limits during this session, and uh, so I think you might be able to guess what that is. <laughs> we're not going to talk about semicolons because that's not what we're about. All right, a little bit about me. Uh, I like to do this part quick. So I am a published author. I'm very proud of that. I'm co-author of jQuery Mobile Web Development Essentials with Ray Camden uh, in the back over there, and I am chapter leader of the uh, jQuery Mobile Cookbook uh, that's going to be coming out. Probably later this year, I guess, in the fall, maybe. I don't know. You guys know when? Yeah. Spring? <laughs> Something like that. So it's on O'Reilly. It's coming out later. Um, I blog, andymatthews.net. I write about all sorts of things, jQuery Mobile, jQuery, anything that strikes my fancy. Uh, you might have seen this picture if you follow me on Twitter. Uh, I've threatened to walk around with a sort of like orange little construction paper behind me to make it easier for people to recognize me. Um, so I have code. I've done a whole bunch of stuff for jQuery Mobile. Plugins, um, uh, autocomplete plugin, a tiny sort plugin, a couple of themes, uh, and then a jQuery Mobile boilerplate, uh, and finally a Twitter bootstrap thing. Those are some pretty popular ones. And there's my GitHub account. Uh, and then this is my family, obligatory. And finally, I want to mention I'm from Nashville. Uh, <laughs> where's Adam? Yeah, when I moved to Nashville, I thought everyone was going to be wearing co uh, cowboy boots and big 10-gallon hats. Uh, it's not, actually. We have a lot of cool stuff. So, And actually, a really big, booming tech scene for what it's worth. And we don't have uh, income tax. i throw that out there. So. <laughs> for those of you that actually like to keep your own money. All right, so real quick. For those of you that want to actually go out and watch the game, uh, here's a real quick overview of jQuery Mobile, and then you can decide if you want to stick around or not. It's, uh, it's a touch-optimized web framework, smartphones and tablets. It's got graded browser support, and basically what that means is they've got about 80 devices that they test for with varying, de, uh, varying levels of browsers and versions, and they assign A, B, or C depending on the browser's capability, A being the most capable, it can do all the sorts of things, and then C being, you know, stuff that's not very good. But the good thing is, because it's all HTML, every browser can use it. They just might not get all the bells and whistles. It's got UI, URL routing. It's got theming. It's built on HTML5. It has a set of five themes and swatches built in with 22 icons. It was released in 2010. It's when I started using it. And the current version is 1.1.0. And I think 1.1.1 is coming out like this weekend, maybe, or maybe today. I haven't checked yet. So in a nutshell, here's how you include it in your site. <clears throat> you actually have uh, two files, three, excuse me, three files, including jQuery. Uh, they have a CDN version, but I'm leaving that off just for space. Uh, there's a CSS file, jQuery, and then the uh, jQuery mobile C uh, JS file. There's an alternate way of including it, and that's if you want to build your own custom theme, which we'll be covering in a minute. <clears throat> the first one is the structure CSS. And what that does is just gives you the basics. Uh, it's just sort of like the, the dimensions, the padding, the margin. Uh, and then you provide the extras, colors, background colors, that sort of thing. 
uh, and then the rest is the same. And basically what it does is it lets you take your site from looking like this, which is, you know, it's ugly, but it's got content. Uh, what I did is I just did a really quick version of the jQuery conference website. You can see all the schedule, and there's people, and all sorts of things. There's Rebecca. You guys enjoy Rebecca's presentation, by the way? She did a great job, right? Okay. So the cool thing is you can go from this, and just with the inclusion of those files, you get something that looks like this. I won't go through all of it, but when you click into the schedule for, whoop, click into the schedule, for example, you get something that looks like this, all right? That's literally with just including jQuery, two JavaScript files, and uh, the CSS file. Yes, sorry about that. Thought I was. There you go. Is that better? Uh, some of this, <laughs> apparently not. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so let's reload that. Hmm, interesting. Okay. All of it's not like this, this is the screenshots. So, and finally, there's a website called JQM Gallery that actually uh, allows user submissions, and basically people can say, hey, check out my cool jQuery mobile website. Uh, and so you can kind of get at a glance all of the different options uh, that people have available to them. Okay, so real quick, uh, let's take a look. Uh, who here has ever used jQuery Mobile at all? Oh, wow, that's awesome. Okay, I'm glad that you guys prepared for my session. Thank you very much. All right, so I'm going to assume that most people have some familiarity, which it looks like you guys do, about at least half of you. Uh, so we're going to skip this part real quick, and we're going to go straight into custom icons. Now, like I said, uh, jQuery Mobile ships by default with 22 sets of I uh, 22 icons. There's some pretty good ones, uh, really common stars and reverses and grids and that sort of thing. Uh, but back in February, I was thinking to myself, really needs to be more icons. I was building a website uh, for, for my work, and uh, I needed some extra stuff, and so I decided, well, let's go ahead and make some extra ones. So I added, uh, there's 55 icons, I believe. 55, something like that? Yeah, something like that. Uh, so I added a whole bunch extra. And then, back in April, I found out about Font Awesome. Have you guys ever heard of that? Twitter bootstraps Font Awesome? It's really cool. So I decided, let's go ahead and make Font Awesome part of jQuery Mobile uh, icon pack. So, uh, and if I remember correctly, let's see, I've got like a hover here. It's like something like 240 icons. Uh, and the new version that I just released about a week ago actually packages up all of the original jQuery icons along with the icon pack and the font awesome. So it's available for download. All right, so let's talk about creating your own icon. I can wager that I'm probably going to be the only person here that actually has screenshots of Photoshop. <laughs> so, so, you know, that's why I started off as a designer. That's kind of my, uh, my wheelhouse. Oh, except for maybe Doug. All right, cover. All right. So real quick, there's uh, two ways to, one main way to make your icons. Uh, so you start off with Photoshop. Uh, the default icon size for jQuery Mobile is 18 pixels. That's the display size. So what you want to do is you make an icon at 36 pixels square, and we'll cover that in a, a second. Is this on too? Can you guys hear me okay with just this? All right, okay, good. I wasn't sure if it was picking up there. Uh, you want to make it transparent. And then basically what you're going to do is, uh, I like to put a border around it. That kind of gives my, uh, my available, um, available space. And that's like, don't go outside that, and it'll display fine. All right? So I put a little guy, a set of guides, and I colorize it. Uh, this actually is when you download uh, the zip file. It'll include this Photoshop document. OK. All right, so when I import my icon, depends on it. doesn't really matter what icon it is. Um, one thing you need to watch out for, which we'll cover in a second, is Photoshop does what's called sub-pixel rendering. And basically what that is is, um, <clears throat> you can see kind of see the fuzzy edge here on the top and the, the dark black on the, the bottom. Everything between that is like a, a partial pixel, um, and it can actually make your icons look a little bit fuzzy. Uh, so basically what you want to do is go in with the selection tool, make sure it lines up to a whole pixel, and uh, your icons will look much better. When you want to export it, take it into uh, Save for Web, make sure you choose PNG 24. The default icons are actually PNG 8. Uh, but that's aliased and 256 colors. Um, it's not really good enough. I'm pretty sure they did it for file size. Uh, but we can do a lot better uh, as far as quality goes. You get a little bit better anti-aliasing. And then, of course, um, your colors can be a little bit richer if you want to choose, uh, choose colors. So a couple things to remember when you're doing icon, custom icons is uh, the simpler the icon, the better. Uh, remember, your logo 
that might look great on your business card or on the side of your awesome van may not look so great at 18 pixels. <laughs> so just make sure you remember that. Uh, when you do your best, you try to work with vector shapes. Um, basically, vector shapes is uh, anything you do with Illustrator or that sort of thing uh, and import it into Photoshop. Uh, and then, like I said, subpixel rendering really sucks. Um, uh, I probably spent 10 years working with Photoshop before I actually realized that was happening. Uh, and when you actually have to work, uh, work images for the web and for iOS, uh, which is the retina display, and for iPad 3, you sort of get used to fixing subpixel rendering because it's really noticeable on the iPhone 4 and iPad 3. So here's how you add your icons. Uh, standard, I'm not even going to cover this. I'm just going to show it because in case you need it. Uh, you basically want to set it as a background and you give it an RGBA value. Uh, that allows you to set transparency on the, the shape. Uh, and here's the really important part. This is what a lot of people forget. Um, if you've ever seen a website on an iPhone 4 and iPad 3, basically what you have is a really low quality icon or a really low quality image. <clears throat> and uh, hold on a second. This fixes that. If you remember, I said that the basic icon is 18 pixels square. Well, when you make it 36 pixels and you tell it to be a background size of 18 px, basically what that does is the browser takes that image and it squashes it down. Since it's double size already, it's actually going to display at 18 pixels, nice and crisp, on a retina display. Um, probably not so much on the new MacBooks, but uh, I haven't had a chance to play with one of those. And then this is what you get. So assuming that we have this icon down here, little jQuery logo, the hat. So obviously you can't see the retina display on my MacBook, but that's it. OK. All right, custom themes. Who here has ever actually built their own theme? Really? <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So real quick, we're going to cover the visual building blocks of jQuery Mobile. Um, there are lots of them, but the four that I really want to focus on, and I think the ones that really make jQuery Mobile stand out and make it just so stunning, are these four. So border radius, we all know about that. And I do want to point out, they actually use vendor prefixes, and they take care of that for you. I'm not including that just for brevity, but should you need to do that, that is uh, something you'll need to take care of yourself. So you can actually apply a border radius. Uh, you can apply a linear gradient or radial gradient, should you care. You can apply box shadows, and that's around the outside border. And then finally, you can apply drop shadows to text, text shadow. Okay, Again, like I said, I'm leaving off the vendor prefixes. But these are some of the things that help jQuery Mobile's styles make it stand out and make it look really stunning. As far as the UI framework goes, jQuery Mobile um, what they do is they namespace everything. So if you look at the CSS for jQuery Mobile, what you'll see is .ui dash something. Okay, so it might be .ui dash button, .ui dash bar, and then they append the theme name. So it might be <coughs> .ui dash bar dash a, and that is the a swatch that is included in either the default theme or your theme. So they namespace everything, helps keep everything tidy, and it makes it really easy to see what's going on. Uh, they actually have everything in bite-sized pieces. So rather than having a style, <coughs> rather than having a style that is you know 20 or 30 pieces, uh, 20 or 30 definitions, what they have is maybe three or four, or sometimes just one. And what it does is it allows them to attach different different themes in multiple places and it doesn't have to override other parts. And so like I said, then they take those and they stack them on top of each other. So uh, example is a button. It's pretty simple, right? <clears throat> it can't get, can't get much easier than this button. But the button itself, and this is just the shape, just the shape of the button, this is not counting the text inside it, has this style, that style, that style, and that style. So those four styles individually make up that button, and that's what gives it the shadow, the definition, the rounded corners, and the background color. So if you've ever worked with jQuery Mobile, you'll know that the, uh, the built-in themes are really awesome. They look great. Uh, and in these three, 
These are, uh, I believe this is either D, uh, C or D, I can never remember which one is, the B in the middle, and then the last one is E. When you just define that on the body, the children will inherit from the parent. So if you just define the theme on the body tag, the rest of the, the, rest of the page will inherit the yellow theme, for example. So, so those themes are great, and when I started using jQuery Mobile, I was like, that's awesome. I was really excited. So I'm like, great, my son. Go figure. All right, so I was really excited. And then I realized, wait a second. So if I have access to A, B, C, D, and E, that means everybody else does. And so what am I gonna do about that? Wasn't a big fan. But luckily, with the 1.0 release of jQuery Mobile, they came out with Theme Roller. Has anyone ever used Theme Roller for jQuery UI before? Oh, okay, excellent. Has anyone ever used Theme Roller for jQuery Mobile? Just a couple of hands. I was, I was really hoping that you would say that. So let's go ahead and flip over. Let's see. We're going to launch this. And jQuery Mobile is up on GitHub. And you can download it. And you can run it on your local machine. I have MAMP running, which is a really awesome tool. And OK, well, let's reload it. And this is what you get. It's a really slick looking tool. It actually looks like an app, which I really like. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, and I think uh, Tyler Benziger, I don't think he's here, but uh, John Bender, I don't know. John, did you work on it? Theme roller? No? OK, anyway. Uh, so Tyler Benziger, I think, is one of the main guys of this. And they did a really great job. Uh, hmm, and it's cut off. So let's do, OK, can you guys see the top part of it? Yeah, OK, you can see it fine. OK, so real quick, we're going to spend a, a few minutes looking at Theme Roller, kind of show you how to use it, what it's about, uh, and what it can do for you, which actually, it's, it's got a lot. <clears throat> OK, so when you, when you come into Theme Roller, the first thing that they say, let's reload this here and see if I can get that up in the middle. Oh, much better. OK, so the first thing it says is it's got some helpful tips. Don't ignore this, because there's actually something that's really important. OK. We recommend building themes with at least three swatches. They took my advice because they didn't have that to begin with. And basically what was happening is people were creating just one theme. I only want one theme, right? That's, that's I just want this one. So I want to be able to apply everything. I'm going to make my colors and everything. Except the, the problem is when you define your theme A, jQuery Mobile has contrast, right? So the buttons are one color based on one theme, but then they use the the button colors from like the C theme and the A theme and the, all these swatches. And so what ends up happening is you'll have your theme and uh, the, 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 the header bar will look great and the body will look great, uh, but the buttons will be nothing. There won't be anything there. Um, and so if you decide to make one, make three themes. It's pretty important, okay? Uh, and you can actually have zero, uh, A through Z. That's how they define things, by letter, okay? So real quick. You've got a global setting, which is this lets you define sort of like fonts, active colors when you, when you highlight over a, 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 a button, when you click it, the down state, that's your active color, corner radiuses and everything. And those are things that should apply uh, to, to every theme. And then you have an A tab, B, and C. And those correspond to these swatches right here, so this set. So this is the A. And then I can say, I can come in here and I can look at the header and footer bar. I can look at the content, what color my buttons should be when I press them, et cetera. OK. Uh, so the problem is you don't really know what these are supposed to be necessarily. You wouldn't even know that they're there to look for. Uh, one thing you need to know is when you're using Theme Roller, you can't actually do everything in Theme Roller. OK. It's not like meant, for, meant to do everything. You can't assign background images, for example. Uh, you can't easily assign transparency into, um, uh, into colors, for example, like with the, uh, with the drop shadow, et cetera. Uh, so some of you have to do that yourself. Um, but what they do give you is this inspector. So when you click it, inspector's on. And when you come over here, it works just like developer tools, all right? You hover over it and it tells you which item you're going to be interacting with. So if I want to select that, it'll jump me straight to that, ex that section. I can go ahead and I can change. These are the things that Theme Roller will let me change built into the tool. I have an undo and a redo. For those people that have Theme Roller from a previous version, you can actually import. You can create themes based on previous versions, which is kind of nice for those people that haven't upgraded yet. 
uh, then you can take your theme, you can download it, you can import it, and there's something over here. There we go. Oof. Yeah. So you can share it, uh, which is nice. So assuming that you have a client that you're working with or maybe a developer, a lot of people I know are working remote. So you want to you wanna collaborate. So you're going to work you're going to work on your theme, and uh, you're going to send it off. So you're going to share it. Click the share button. All right. So that gives you a link. That gives you a link that'll that'll be good for 30 days. All right. You send it to your coworker. He makes some tweaks. Sends it back. You make some tweaks. Send it back. So it's great collaboration. Right. It's not in real time, but it's pretty close, uh, and it's nice. You can also send it to your client when you're done. Uh, that sort of thing. Whoop. And so then there's also a help center. All right. They also have swatches. They use Adobe Cooler. Is anyone using that for any of their design elements? Anyone? OK, a couple people. It's a pretty cool tool. Um, bummed that it doesn't actually have like a real API. That would be pretty slick. You'd be able to create it. Um, apparently, the wireless is not uh, great here. But basically, what it is is when you expand that, it'll give you uh, like five or six swatches that you can then page through. And you'd be like, OK, I want those colors from that swatch. And uh, you can import them. You can take any of this, drag any swatch directly onto an element, changes it right off the bat. Uh, you can come over here. I am not pretending to be a designer at this moment. I, I have designed in the past, uh, but I'm not trying to be one right now. So you can change the saturation, the lightness. It's pretty cool. It, again, it's not great. It, uh, I should say, excuse me, it is a great tool, uh, but it's not everything, OK? Uh, and also one thing is it kind of gives you the recent colors, which is kind of nice. Oh, man, I changed that one. Darn. It's right there. Okay. As soon as you assign it. Okay. So as soon as you're done, you're going to click download. You're going to give it a theme name. All right. So we'll say jQueryCon. Again, I'm not going to try to download this because I'm not convinced that it'll actually do all the processing and zipping for me on my local machine. So but when you're done, you give it the name. You download the zip. And what it does is it'll actually include uh, an index. Actually, let's, tell you what, let's just try it. Yeah, that's what I figured. OK. So basically what it does is it gives you uh, an index file, and that's your sample, right? When you run it in your browser, it's got everything relative, and it will show all of the links as, you, as you've designed it. It also gives you the code that you can copy and paste uh, into your project, OK? Uh, one thing that's really important, <clears throat> if you decide to use Themeroller, it's going to give you two CSS files. It's going to give you a minified version, and it's going to give you the original full source version. Don't delete that file, all right? Really important. Uh, there's, uh, I, I don't even know if it's a bug, per se, or if it's just an intended feature. At any point ever, you can come back and you can import your theme, okay? So I'm importing. A 1.1.0, or you can import an older theme. The problem is it won't import the minified version. So if you ever want to make changes in Theme Roller to your original theme, keep the minified ver or keep the maximized version, the full source version, because you'll actually be able to take that, copy and paste it right into this box, uh, and re-import it, and then you can just change. Also, one thing that's really nice is if you want to start off with something that's uh, at least there, so you don't have to start from scratch. jQuery mobile team actually lets you import the default theme. You can see what that looks like. Okay, so it's pretty nice. Uh, and like I said, it's right there. If you ever want to add a swatch, you can just click here, let you add it. You can actually delete swatches, or you can duplicate the existing swatch. So if I, for example, if I want to take swatch A, which is really nice, I want to duplicate that, and then down here, duplicated. Now, that's swatch F, and I can take, and I can adjust that. I can tweak it based on what I want. So, all right. Let's go ahead and flip back over the presentation, because basically what that does is that lets you take um, the original file that I had, uh, which was, you know, it's fairly nice looking, uh, and go from this to this. Now, again, I won't necessarily say the one on the right is the most awesome. But I tried to keep colors from jQuery Mobile, the, uh, the events website. So it's got the darker blue, the light blue, it's got the yellow, the blacks, you know, and it looks, looks decent, you know. Definitely looks better than the one on the left. Okay. One of the things that's awesome is people have uh, extended themes uh, based on this. So this is an actual theme. This is not a screenshot. 
if I come over here and I want to do some header buttons, um, so it's an, obviously it's an iOS theme, and I can uh, interact with that. Uh, people have done a Windows Mobile theme. Now again, they may have started with Theme Roller to, to begin with, just to make it easy, but most likely, uh, most likely they, uh, they wrote it probably from scratch. So, and then this uh, on the far right, that's Twitter Bootstrap theme that I wrote. Uh, and it's basically just using Twitter Bootstrap's colors, styles, position, sizes, that sort of thing, border radiuses. Okay, custom plugins. Uh, who here has ever written a jQuery or jQuery mobile plugin? Nice. That's what I was like up until about three or four months ago. Thank you. You kept your hand up a long time. Good job, man. You should be proud of it. All right. So uh, yeah, I was just like that a couple months ago because uh, you know I'm thinking, well, there's lots of stuff. Why do I need to write my own plugin? Um, so <laughs> I mean, seriously, come on. Like you know, you know, you're like the kid next door. Be like, whoa, you wrote a jQuery plugin? That's right. I'm also speaking at the jQuery conference. That's right. Take that. Don't throw my paper in the, whatever. Get off my lawn. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, some other reasons. Why would you want to write your own plugin? Um, I'm actually in the process of rewriting a couple of my own plugins into, uh, into the jQuery widget factory pattern. I was talking to Scott Gonzalez earlier. He gave me some good advice. Um, writing a plugin is not hard. Um, but there's lots and lots of options. Uh, you guys all know who probably Adi Osmani is. He's got a website that shows jQuery mobile or jQuery boilerplate plugins. Um, it's overwhelming the ways, the possible ways that you can write the plugin. And so you're like, how do I know which one is the right one? Scott actually has some interesting words on that. I'll let you talk to him about it. But uh, you know, so the primary reason you would write a plugin is because you have a need for a plugin. This one kind of does what I want, but it's got like this extra stuff. And I could live with it, but I'm going to take the plunge and I'm going to write my own plugin. So, Here's how you might get started with writing a plugin. If you're really cool, and if you're like John Resig or like Todd Parker or something, or Scott, you could probably start with an empty page uh, and just go to town. That is not me. Uh, but how I started was I would take an existing plugin. So, uh, what? Oh, sorry. Uh, so I would take an existing plugin and I would be like, okay, I'm going to strip everything out. And okay, here's some, I, I like this. This seems right to me. I can work with this. Or you could use Grunt. Has anyone heard of Grunt? Yeah. A couple of people? You know, let's try that again. That's, that's an awesome tool. Has anyone ever heard of Grunt? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. It's great. Um, it, it makes things easier. Um, and uh, so we're going to talk about it real quick because that's how, I'm, that's how I'm starting to write all my plugins now. This makes it easier. So basically, it works on top of Node. Uh, so if you already have Node, then you're good. If not, install Node. And then you do these commands. npm install grunt, and that'll get everything set up for you. Uh, and you might need a dash g, so you can install it globally. Uh, and then you just create a directory. Right? Make directory anywhere you want to, it doesn't really matter. Uh, CD into that directory, and then you run a command called grunt init. The colon is an argument, and it basically says, well, what kind of grunt file do you want? I want a jQuery plugin. I want a grunt task plugin. I want, uh, I think there's like four or five defaults, uh, but in our case, we're on jQuery plugin. Okay, so you run that, and it'll ask you a whole bunch of questions. What version is it? Do you have a GitHub repository? What's the file name? A whole bunch of things. Uh, what kind of license do you want? Uh, and when you're done, you get something that looks like this. So here's the directory structure. It starts off with grunt.js, and that is your, essentially your package for grunt. Um, and feel free to, I think Ben is in here. If you're in here, feel free to correct me on any of this stuff. Um, so that's the package. That, that defines all your tasks uh, that, uh, that Grunt can do for you by default for jQuery. And those tasks uh, include uh, minification. They include linting, uh, which checks your syntax. They include um, uh, uh, concatenation. And then what I've been using it for a lot is unit testing. So uh, unit testing via QUnit. Uh, and so what we have is, uh, so you get all your Grunt tasks, and then there's a package, JSON. You have some of your license files. A README, uh, and they're all boilerplate, so you don't have to go in and change it yourself. But you know, 
setting up all this stuff might take you 20 or 30 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. It's a time saver, especially if you're on a large project and you're doing this a dozen or two dozen times. You saved yourself almost an entire day in 20 minutes. So it's really good. Uh, and actually, let's just go ahead and run through it. So we still got four minutes. Let's try and run through it. Um, I'll just show you how it works. One thing that I actually wanted to point out that I promised in my uh, thing is um, a little bit of efficiency and workflow. Uh, you guys all know this guy named Paul Irish, I think. Uh, he did a, a talk at FluentConf a couple of weeks ago on web development tools for 2013. The guy is always thinking ahead. Uh, and one of the things he talks about is learning your tools, using your shell more. Uh, and so I've really taken it to heart. Um, some of the things he talks about is switching to a different uh, uh, shell, which is Z shell. I won't talk about that, but it's got some, some cool stuff to it. There's another function that he uh, showed called Z. Z. Uh, and basically what it does is it learns as you change directories, the CD command, it'll actually learn and kind of keep track of it. And the ones that you use most commonly, it'll actually let you just kind of do that. So instead of going, you know, CD user colon tilde slash desktop, blah, 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 Z desk, all right? Or Z GitHub, you know? So anyway. And it'll actually do autocomplete too, which is nice. Um, so you can also do functions and stuff too. So I'm going to make a directory and we'll call it. Oh, yeah. Hold on a second. Sorry. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. So there we go. So I'm on my desktop. I'm going to make a grunt. And let's go ahead and there we go. Okay. So it'll give you a project name. Now, it inherits from the directory. So you can just go ahead and change all this stuff. Uh, it knows my GitHub account already because it's reason it from my, uh, from my user account. Uh, it'll ask you all these questions. Yeah. And I actually changed my defaults, some of the stuff as well, uh, in the, the core. So yes, it knows all this stuff. Uh, no. OK. So here's all the stuff that it did. And that's what we have. So it's kind of like I said, I already showed you all this stuff. But that was, what, 30 seconds maybe? Uh, and again, it would have taken me a long time. So, so that's Grunt. And uh, let's come back over here. and. Uh, Show off a couple of plugins. So these are both plugins that I've written. Uh, one of them is a sorting plugin. Uh, uses a uh, an existing jQuery mobile plugin called TinySort, and but it's excuse me, it uses an existing jQuery plugin called TinySort. And so I wrote a wrapper specifically for jQuery mobile. It initializes the events. Uh, it adds this header bar, uh, you know, and it kind of lets you sort everything. Works just like you would think, but it actually builds it and does it using jQuery mobile stuff. So, and that's available on GitHub. Uh, and then one of the ones that, uh, that gets the most traffic is actually a plugin I wrote called Autocomplete. Uh, it works just like Autocomplete. It does. Um, it's probably because it's not running in localhost. It's actually making, let's just do this one. So anyway, it works like that. Click through it, et cetera. So that's pretty much it there. OK, so here's some resources if you're actually interested in learning more about jQuery mobile, theming, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a couple of guys, myself, Ray, Ray Camden, another guy named Christoph Conrads, uh, works for Adobe. And he's actually doing a lot of stuff with Backbone and jQuery mobile, Backbone, or excuse me, jQuery mobile and PhoneGap, uh, et cetera. Uh, so those are all really good resources. There's also a, a jQuery mobile LinkedIn group. Uh, it's all the developers. Um, probably around 13 or 1400 now. So that's it.